What is going on everybody? Tyler Brandt back here with another video and finally going to start cranking out some consistent content again. The, this COVID thing has kind of messed a lot of things up and kind of put me in a weird headspace, but we're past it. We're back to cranking out consistent content and the last video on the channel that we had here was the goodbye Tom Brady video, the thank you Tom Brady video and it wasn't much but it was just an honest like, you know, let's turn the page. Thank you for everything, but it's time to go. You know, it's as you would turn the page, so does pa Patriots Nation and the Patriots. So here we go. The first video post Tom Brady era. And why not? I thought start it with the guy that's probably going to have the biggest shoes to fill. And that is at least today in April, the new starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. And that is Jarrett Stidham, the second year quarterback from Auburn. Now, I'm not particularly sure that he's going to be the starting quarterback. If I had to put money on it, I think he's going to be. I think Belichick drafted him for a reason. And despite him throwing four passes, one of them, which was a pick six to Jamal Adams in the, in the game against the Jets, I don't think his story is written by any means. And I've seen a lot of mixed reviews about this on Twitter and on a whole bunch of different other social medias. And I don't think it's necessarily time to just sail this kid down the river yet and, you know, say this is going to be a placeholder or this guy's going to suck or this guy's this or that. Listen, I mean, first of all, Belichick's given you two decades of dominance as a head coach. So you got to trust Bill Belichick. And second of all, Jared Stidham's not a bad quarterback by any stretch of the imagination. And he, I don't think it's fair that he gets labeled a bad quarterback today. Because the sample size that we've had from him in real game action, there's a huge sample size of good college playoff football. Good, well, good college football, and there's a very, very small sample size of NFL football that people seem to be dwelling on. So, with that being said, we're going to kind of profile Jared Stidham today, what he looks like, and, and what he's done in college, some of the good, some of the bad, and we'll talk about some of the preseason numbers. But let's not sail this kid down the river yet. Patriots Nation, I think we need to have this kid's back. You know, I think it's it's not the end of the world that he's the starting quarterback. And I think he's here for a reason. And he was picked for a reason by Belichick and company. So here we go. We have an outline today on the career thus far of the new Patriots quarterback, Jared Stidham. So let's go all the way back to the beginning here. Jared Stidham was a top 50 quarterback prospect coming out of high school. I believe he amassed over 3,000 yards and over 20 touchdowns as a senior in high school. And he decides to start his college career at Baylor under Art Biles and the Baylor Bears. So in his freshman season, which he started 10 games, I believe, and he switched around with a load of other quarterbacks, Baylor at Baylor, he ends up going 75 for 109. That's 68% completion. 1,265 yards, 12 touchdowns, 2 interceptions, a 199 passer rating, which is calculated differently in college. So good quarterbacks, that number is going to be very high. And 199 is a very good passer rating in college. And he plays for the 27th ranked offense, They're averaging about 34 points per game in the Big 12. Again, as a freshman. So he comes in off the scene. Uh, two of his bigger games in his freshman year, first of all, is against number 12 at home. Versus number 12, Oklahoma, ba this is Baker Mayfield's Oklahoma team. 16 for 27, 257 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, and a 150 passer rating. So bursts onto the scene as a freshman here. Instantly has a very good game against a good Oklahoma team with Baker Mayfield. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a first-round number one overall pick in Baker Mayfield. And then later that year, in a game they would win because they lost Oklahoma. So they would go on to win a game at number four, Oklahoma State. In that game, Jared Stidham goes 12-21, 258 yards, one touchdown, no picks, a 176 passer rating. So as a freshman, again, only starting part-time. Only He's not in every game. There's a bunch of guys that are being kind of filtered through. But he can put up big numbers. He can play in, in big scenarios, in big crowds. So, Jared Stidham, freshman year, not too bad. Not amazing, again, because he's splitting time. But a good freshman year for Jared Stidham at the University of Baylor in 2015. So, his freshman year is done at the University of Baylor. Again, a pretty decent season for a freshman here. Now, something that we'll kind of see as a theme 
here is Jared Stidham has had a very rocky roller coaster of a college career. And we're going to start here. Art Bryles gets involved in a, I think it was it's the sexual harassment and the sexual assault case at Baylor. He ends up getting fired. And Jared Stidham, as a product of all that drama and all that negative publicity, he ends up going to transfer to the University of Auburn. However, unfortunately... He does not transfer in time, so he has to sit out the 2016 season because he is ineligible because he's transferring from Baylor to Auburn. So he's going to sit out 2016. He, you know, still works out, of course. There's, you know, articles of him working out with a community college down in the Southeast. But he takes the year off, and we go into 2017 now where we really see a fantastic Jared Stidham who was, this is probably the peak of his college career in 2017 with this Auburn team that went in and shocked a lot of people, especially with the late run, which we're going to talk about right now. Okay, so here we go, the 2017 season at the University of Auburn. This is where Jad Stidham is on full display, all his abilities as a decent runner, as a very good passer. So here we go, 2017 at Auburn, he was 246 of 370. That's a 66.5 completion percentage. That's going to go down a chunk. I mean, the SEC defenses compared to the Big 12 defenses are night and day. He throws as a full-time starter for 3,158 yards, 18 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, a 151 passer rating in SEC play. In the SEC, That's those are very good numbers. I mean, against the lead defenses that you're playing almost week in and week out. But his season starts here. Mississippi State at Mississippi State, number 24. He wins that game 13 to 16, 264 yards, two touchdowns, a 261.1 passer rating. That's off the charts. Again, calculated different in college, but you see a Jad Stidham here that is different than any Jad Stidham we've seen to this point. I mean, this kid can absolutely sling the rock. And I think at this point in this 2017 season, now the world knows Auburn's going to be a good team. They don't know that they're going to go on a run at the end of the season. But Jared Stidham, I think, is starting to put the world on notice that he's not just some kid. He can sling the rock with anybody. And it starts with a good game here against number 24, Mississippi State, in their building. So the rest of 2017 comes and goes. Jared Stidham has some, you know, good games, some great games, some bad games. And Auburn, as a team, they're not really considered a title competitor, um... Uh, not a college football playoff competitor here at this point. But all of a sudden, late in the season, there's a two-game, a three-game stretch, really, where Auburn just goes on a tear. And in three weeks, they beat number two Georgia and number one Alabama. And I think, to me, this is where Jad Stidham, at least for me, really gets put on the map as not just some random kid that's a quarterback. That I think he can be a very good quarterback at the next level, a quarterback that can at least win you games and put you in positions to win games. So we're going to start here with the number two ranked Georgia team, Auburn's home for both of these games, but against number two Georgia, a very, very good Georgia team with Jake Fromm. They win the game 16 of 23, 214 yards, three touchdowns on that Georgia defense. That's good for a 190.8 pass rating for Stidham. Then they win next week. I think it was the week after Georgia. I think it was against the Division II school or 1AA. And then the week after that, two weeks after the Georgia upset, they now upset number one Alabama in their building. And again, Stidham, a very, very good game. 21-28, 237 yards, one rushing touchdown, didn't throw one, and a 146 passer rating. So two out of those last three weeks, I mean, he's setting the world on fire at this point of the season. He really, really is. And at this point, by the time the season's over, all of a sudden, before we get to SEC Championship weekend, if Auburn can pull the upset against Georgia in the bowl game, that's who they end up playing in the SEC title game. If Georgia, if Auburn, excuse me, can pull the upset in the bowl game, all of a sudden, Auburn's playing for a national title. They're in the college football playoff. So, in three weeks, Jad Stidham takes over the world here, an upstart Auburn team. They beat the two best schools in the country in three weeks and are on the verge of playing for a natty title. However, with that being said, they don't beat Georgia. Georgia wins. It was kind of a route, which, I mean, Georgia's an elite, elite school in college football. So, Jad Stidham wasn't great in that game. 
Uh, he didn't do enough to win, obviously. So Auburn ends up playing the University of Central Florida in the Peach Bowl that year. And this was the UCF National Championship year where they went undefeated and beat Auburn and they were the national champions. Conversation for a different day. They're not anywhere near national champions. However, with that being said, in that Peach Bowl National Championship game, they do Auburn does lose the game, but Stidham goes 28 of 43. That's, I think, the first time that season he's thrown that much in a game. 331 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, a 128 passer rating. So they really let Chad Stidham just throw the rock and just sling it. And he can amass yards. He made a few dumb throws against a good team. It's not a knock on UCF when I say national champions. They are a good team. I don't think they're at the level of anyone else. But that's a statement win for UCF. And a win that really would have cemented Jazz Stidham's legacy a little bit more. And maybe kind of would have been something to help pad a little bit of that draft stock for him. But he loses that game. A good 2017 Auburn team. Uh, they were top 30 in offense. They were top 30 in defense, uh, although the Auburn defense is always good. So, good 2017 for Jad Stidham here. Uh, you know, could have made a few plays from being a national championship competitor. Losing the bowl game doesn't do any good. But at the end of 2017, Jad Stidham is one of the top draft prospects coming into the next couple years of the draft. At, when 2017 ends, a lot of people are like, all right, this kid can play some football. If he could put another good year of college football together, he's going to be up there with the top guys in the draft class. I mean, he would have came out last year, so he would have been up there with some of the bigger guys in the draft class. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to leave it there, and that is going to be it for part one of two about Jared Stidham. Next time, we're going to get into year 2018 at Auburn, his draft stock, what some scouts thought of him going into the draft getting taken by New England where he was taken. And we'll dive a little bit into the preseason numbers, his only real game action that wasn't a pass or two in the middle of a blowout one way or the other. But there is definitely more to talk about Jared Stidham. We are going to get into it more on in the next video. Until then, once again, I'm Tyler Brandt. Remember to follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, at the Tyler Brandt. And I'll catch you on the next one where we talk a little bit more about Jared Stidham for part two of the life and times, if you want to call it that, of Jad Stidham. Checking out one more time, this is Tyler Brent.